Hi, welcome to another solar tutorial. This tutorial is linked with the previous tutorial where exactly we, were, we started to uh, start a solar home and configure a solar core. So in that tutorial we have created two files and the name of the files are uh, solar.xml and core.properties. Now we have to create two more files and they will be called solarconfig.xml and schema.xml. So to do that, if you can remember, if you cannot remember, you can go back to that tutorial to see that we are in the example slash solar directory, and in that directory we have we have created a subdirectory called tutorial. So we are now in inside subdirectory tutorial. We have created solar.xml in the previous tutorial, here it is, and we also created a subdirectory called simple, here it is, and inside that subdirectory simple we have a file called core.properties. Now inside this subdirectory called simple we are going to create another subdirectory which is called conf and inside conf we are going to create another XML file and the name of the XML file will be solar config and the extension is going to be XML. Now again we, we open this XML file with the text editor and we're going to populate this particular XML file. So I'm not going to populate them uh, because uh, th because of the slow typing speed uh, that the tutorial is going to be long and you get you can get bored. So here how here the solar config.xml and how it looks like when you populate them but there are a few more tags there but I just try to omit them here, so we don't um, don't need them at this moment. So in the solar config.xml file, like this one here, uh, we can define how to manage requests and data manipulation for the user. And this file can contain a number of different configurations. And here we can plug in specific components and define how they are integrated with the, within the default workflow of the data. And their typical uses include helping API with suggestions to expose and to customize them for different language localizations. So in this solar config.xml, you can see that we have the tag XML to let the system know that it's an XML file, and then we have a tag called config. So within the config tag here, uh, we have some other tags like loosen match version, uh, request handler, admin, and so on. So let's uh, take a look at those tags one by one. So the loosen match version here is uh, the loosen version that are being used by Solar. It's kind of trivial. Request handler is Solar uh, uses many request handler and they have their names like standard, update, or admin, and they have their own classes as attributes, and they have sometimes their default values as well. So you may ask, what is a request handler? Well, Solar exposes various components as services, and in order to uh, that's for to provide a different kind of functionality, and these components are managed with the request handler components. And there can be many request handler components like query handler, update handler, or admin handler. While the query handler is a standard handler implicitly mapped on the path select slash select, unless we decide to explicitly use another name, we have already seen this handler in action as it was the one that received our first test query whenever we posted a query to Solar. So that time query handler was used by Solar. We also have update handler, and this is explicitly for mapping um, to the path slash update. This is used to receive new data to be indexed. Please note that the data to be indexed in Solar are generally called documents that we tried to use previously in, a, in the previous tutorials. And it's important to dis distinguish them from the original data we want to search over. Well, the admin handler is uh, explicitly mapped to the path slash admin. And this is essential for using the admin web interface and having access to the statistics as you could show uh, as we have shown you from here that we have some uh, statistics for collection one core here you can see the statistics here 
and all of these information like query, plugins, and so on. So those are actually uh, handled by the request handler called uh, type admin handler. And for the admin tag, you can see the default query is set to all. As you can recall, that star colon star is called or all. So that's the default query set for the admin. Whenever we go to the solar admin here, for example, and we try to search a query, you can see that the query is set to star colon star because that was set as the default query in collection one course solar config.xml file as well. So it's pretty much a trivial thing to do. That this will give you a very good idea to uh, understand what's a solar config.xml file and what's inside of this particular file. So now we have populated this solar config.xml file. We just save it. And now we are left with just one file, which is called, uh, which is called schema.xml. Now we are going to create the schema.xml file again inside that conf subfolder that we have subdirectory that we have created and inside that subdirectory we are creating a document and the file and its name is going to be schema.xml. Okay and then we are going to populate it with some text and we are going to open it with a text editor. So again because the file schema.xml is a bit longer that's why I'm not going to type all the things in, but here how it looks like a schema.xml file. Again, this is an XML file and this particular tag is saying that. And all the information about the schema that we're going to use for this core, they are inside the schema tag here. So the name of the schema is simple as we are, we are using our the name we are using the name simple as our core and the version is 1.1 these are kind of trivial stuffs then we have some types here and inside the type tag we have some field tags field type tags and those field type field types are string and long and they we have to define the classes where exactly uh, those string field types and long field types are located they, those are in solar.str field and solar dot try long field um, respectively and after the types we have the fields and in these fields we have the name of the field like id author title and text and we also have seen that the types are long and string so these types the type of fields we are going to use they should be defined in the types tags inside types tags okay so we're not we're using an integer or a float or double because we did not define the, those types in the types uh, inside the types tags here. We have only string and long, so that's why our ID, author, title, and text, they have to be string or long. So sometimes we can see that the ID is a required field because it's set to true. And the name of the author can be multi-valued because of the first name and last name thing. So this multi-valued field attribute is set to true and we also have some dynamic field and I'm going to explain the dynamic field to you uh, later and then we can see that after the fields tag we're just saying that ID is the unique key and the default search field is going to be the full text so uh, what's a full text we're going to be coming back to it and the swipe solar query parser default operator is set to R because whenever you are trying to put something like uh, jk rawlings at that time uh, jk rawlings uh, harry potter at that time jk rawlings and harry potter will be concatenated with an or, or operator by default so you can set it to end in that case all all the items that you're trying to index in order to find them they have to have jk rawlings and harry potter together so or is a default choice in most of the search cases so you can set solar query parser default operator set to r okay so that's the basic uh, instances in in a schema.xml file and whenever uh, you might you might be wondering that whenever we try to post some data in in the solar in the previous tutorials at that point solar could easily uh, index those uh, data inside of its core now the question can be is that 
how exactly Solar know, knows that what type of uh, data you are going to send. It may be uh, the type of data you are sending it may not match with its schema.xml. So far, the examples that we have shown or we have learned, they followed the default schema.xml file provided with Solar. But now in this time, we're going to define our own schema and we're going to send Solar data that actually adhere or follow that particular schema. And we will see uh, what we can do with this schema.xml, what type of information or data we can post with this schema.xml to Solar uh, in the next tutorial. So let me take you to the types here first. Uh, we are going to examine the tags here one by one. So types is used for defining a list of different data types or values. As you can see that we can define strings and numeric types or new types as we like. It's very common to have two or three different data types for handling text values shaped for different purposes. But for the moment, we need to focus on the main concepts here. Well, now we are going to the fields here. In the fields, uh, these are essential part of the file and every field should declare a unique name so the names uh, have to be unique and associated with, with the names with one of the types defined previously. So you have to be careful with that. It's important to understand that not every instance of a sole document must have a value for every field. It's important. When mandatory, a field can be simply marked as required, just like this one, ID. You have to put ID. If you don't send ID, you're getting an error. And this approach is very flexible because we index only the actual data values without introducing the dummy empty fields when a value is not present. Okay, so now we have something called copy field and the attributes of source uh, is set to asterisk, asterisk and destination is full text. What is a copy field? Copy field is used when the content of a source field needs to be added and indexed on some other destination field, usually as a melting pot for very general searches. This idea behind, the idea behind it is that we want to be able to search in all the fields of the document at the same time. So that's why it, the wildcard asterisk has been used. The most simple way to do this is by copying the values into a default field where we will perform the actual searches. So the default destination is set to full text here, you can see and the field will also have its own type analysis defined. So you can see that we, have, we are saying that the destination is a full text and then we are going to define the field name full, full text that is going to be a string type, multi-value is allowed and it's going to be indexed. Well, the dynamic field here, dynamic field is uh, a bit tricky. By using this type, we can start indexing some data without having to define the name of the field because sometimes we may have uh, data that actually don't go or don't align with any of the fields here. So that's why we are say we are uh, just putting a dynamic field here. Dynamic fields are required for that particular kind of data. The name will be defined by the wildcard. Here we are saying anything can be preceded with an underscore string. So that's our wildcard here. And uh, for, uh, we can post new documents containing string values such as uh, first name underscore string, last name underscore string, and that will be captured by this particular dynamic field here. Now the unique key here is just like a primary key in a database, they have to be unique. The ID should not, one ID should not match with, uh, with another ID. And the default search field here, it's uh, set to full text and this field is used to where when there is no request for a specific field. If you don't specify which field to search, then default search field will be used. And this in this case, we are saying that it's going to be full text and full text has been defined here in this field tag. And the default operator, I told you that it's set to R, it's for uh, you know, if you if you search Google, you sometimes place plus sign between two words, though that's a that's an end, and by default you don't put any plus sign between two words. That's an or. So every field can be defined the following three important attributes like multi-valued, is set to true 
when a solid document can contain more than one instance of values for the field otherwise it's false it's default is false indexed uh, this also this is also an attribute uh, if it's set to true then the field is used in index and stored is a kind of tricky again this is used to permanently save the original data value for a field whether indexed or not Moreover, during the indexing phase, a field is analyzed as defined by its type in the schema.xml file to update the index. However, it is not explicitly saved unless we decide to store it. So that's pretty much of uh, that's pretty much of the description of the schema.xml file. So this is the schema we are going to use, and we have to send solar data that actually can that actually are aligned with the schema.xml that we are producing, that we are populating, we are creating for this particular core named simple.xml. Okay, so now we just stopped our solar instance that we were running by pressing Ctrl C. And again, we have started our solar instance by putting the java minus jar start.jar command. And it's now up and running. Then you can go to the solar admin here and you refresh that page so let's go to the dashboard first and the core selector then you can see that we have a new core called simple and if you go to the simple as we did not index any kind of documents so far in this particular core you can see the number of docs is zero so that's how you create a solar core now as we are having our solar core up and running we can index some data that actually are aligned with the schema that we have produced for this particular core and that will be demonstrated in the next tutorial if you're benefited from these tutorials then please subscribe please press like share as you like and that will be really benefited for this tutorial channel until the next tutorial have a wonderful time thank you very much